Whether you've been working in tech for years or you're still looking to break into the field, no one forgets the reason why they started doing it, why they started learning to code, why you quit your old job and started a new one, your coding developer tech origin story, if you will. Why don't we read about someone from Titan's origin story reading the article control alt delete how i force quit my old career and started coding this article was written by marcy acevedo on the titan team on twitter slash x you can find marcy at underscore sugar coded that's underscore sugar coded let's read control alt delete how i force quit my old career and started coding We've all heard it. At some point, life will hand you lemons and your task is to turn them into lemonade. But people don't tell you that sometimes you just end up with heartburn, wondering why you even tried. Here's a secret. If your lemons go bad, toss them in the trash bin and treat yourself to a milkshake instead. A few years ago, I'd had my share of lemons and heartburn, so I reached for my milkshake and started a new career in coding. Let me tell you, moving into an entirely new career when you're past your prime learning years is tough. Balancing a job, a family, and other responsibilities while learning a new skill can feel like juggling flaming torches. But if you're thinking about it, fear not. You're not alone. Who am I? I'm Marcy, and it's a pleasure to meet you. I started coding at 36 with no degree or tech experience, just stubbornness and lots of coffee. Fast forward a few years, and I'm a programmer at Titan. Let's talk about it. Why I changed careers. I spent the majority of my adult career as a hairstylist. I enjoyed it for a time, but after 15 years, I felt increasingly burnt out. The industry was evolving in a direction that didn't resonate with me anymore, and I'd had enough. I no longer looked forward to work, and every morning I searched for reasons to stay home. That's when I knew I needed a fresh start. It felt like I was stuck on a roller coaster without brakes. Staying on was maddening, but I didn't know what else to do. When I considered my options, my brain circled back to coding every time. Sure, I was a total newbie in the tech world, but since my Nintendo days, I'd been fascinated by the thought that ones and zeros shaped everything I saw on the screen. Also, who could forget the days of spicing up your MySpace profile? With my imaginary approval from MySpace Tom, I decided to go for it. How I restarted learning. I quickly discovered programs like Free Code Camp and Code Academy. And I was ready to start. I arrogantly thought, how hard could this be? People teach themselves to code all the time. But I hit the first of a few difficult moments when I realized I had forgotten how to learn. At that point, I hadn't been in an academically structured setting since high school. And then the embarrassment started. I'd already, boisterously, expressed my intentions to become a coder to anyone who would listen. How would it look if I quit now? Would everyone think I'm stupid? Was I stupid? Today, I know this is imposter syndrome, and oh boy, that wasn't the last time she reared her ugly head. So in search of structure, I joined a full-time boot camp. I was beyond excited, planning to attend school Monday through Friday and keep some shifts at the salon. A girl's got to pay her bills, right? Life had to be one of those infamous lemons we spoke of, and after a few weeks, I realized how unsustainable that was. I was coding 60 to 70 hours a week and had no time or energy for anything else. I was exhausted. I left the salon before the month ended and took out a bank loan to survive. It was so disheartening. Why did I have to work twice as long as everyone else? I'm now thousands of dollars in debt and unemployed for the first time since I was 16 years old. What have I gotten myself into? This was the first time I considered quitting. How I almost quit again. While the class was what I wanted, structure, deadlines, homework, I was so self-conscious that I was the oldest student by at least a decade and they'd all finished the self-paced programs that I gave up on. They cranked out assignments while I struggled to understand how a for loop works. I remember that on one occasion we had to create a small React app. No crud yet, nothing crazy. While my classmates presented their projects, I made such a weird bug that the instructor couldn't even fix it. I'm still trying to figure out what I did wrong today. After a couple of months and countless hours of frustration, I was on the verge of giving up again. It felt entirely hopeless, and then one day everything changed. On this day, my instructor could tell something was off with me, and he called me in to talk. We sat in an empty conference room, and I was confident he would inform me I was being kicked out. To my surprise, he asked, what's going on with you today? I immediately started crying my eyes out. I'm talking Kim Kardashian style. Without much choice and between hiccups, I told him everything. I'm an idiot. What am I even doing here? Everyone understands this except me. Why did I leave a successful career this close to 40? 
Am I even hireable when there are so many younger people to choose from? I'm too old to learn something this complex. I've made a colossal mistake. He gave me a moment to catch my breath and finally asked me a question that was so simple and yet completely shifted how I think about things, even today. Why don't you ask for more help? I tried to think of an excuse, anything to save my ego, but I couldn't. Instead, I sheepishly told him that I was embarrassed. I compared myself to the other students who don't ask as many questions and couldn't understand why I don't click with the course material the way they do. Why I didn't quit. His response changed everything. First of all, they do ask questions, he's told me. They DM me instead of speaking up because they're self-conscious too. None of us knows everything and never will. Some kids learn to read at four and some learn to read at eight. It doesn't matter how old you are when you start. We all start at the beginning. Ask questions, that's how we learn. So you're telling me you have to learn things to know them? I walked back to the class, bleary-eyed, my mind racing, trying to absorb what I had just learned. Later, when a discussion about JavaScript came up out and I was quiet as usual, my instructor made eye contact and gave me a look. Speak up, it said. With my face hot and my pride swallowed, I asked my classmate, can you explain what you mean? He smiled and said, of course. We worked together on the problem until I understood. We laughed, chatted, and complained about how weird JavaScript is. He didn't care how old I was. No one thought I was stupid. We were all just learning and having fun. The only person in that room that gave a damn about any of that was me. What I learned from others. I recently put out a survey to collect insights from others who chose coding as their new career. Their ages ranged from 27 to 50s, from students to CEOs. Some top takeaways are... 100% of people surveyed face the backlash of imposter syndrome. 80% of them still feel it sometimes today. 80% have, at some point, wanted to give up. 50% had no prior tech background. The reasons they changed careers were as diverse as the individuals themselves. Some wanted to work for themselves and others were recovering from divorce or burnout from retail. Some sought more creativity while others wanted to leave the service industry. One person shared that they wanted to change to a career where they could work from home to manage their anxiety. Everyone faced or is facing different challenges. Here are a few specific responses folks shared in my survey. Alejandro, a student from California, said, I'm looking to finding slash creating opportunities to get real world experience. Ken Barrios, a web developer from Chicago. After nine years, I still hate math and get anxious hearing client requests. I'm terrified something will come up that I can't do or learn. John Baer, VP of Engineering, London, UK. When I learned there were not many resources, that was 15 years ago, pre-Stack Overflow. Anonymous participant, software engineer, Chicago. There is no one cure for imposter syndrome. It probably took a good two years of working before I started to accept that I'm actually good at my job. What you can learn from me. So what does this all mean? Coding is hard. It's that simple. No matter who you are, how old you are, or how many sweet tricks you can do on a skateboard, we all need the same thing. Time, persistence, and remembering no one cares about your hangups but you. I'll be honest, I still struggle with imposter syndrome. I still question myself and probably always will, but in these moments, I'll try to remember how far I've come. I went from sobbing in a conference room to working my dream job in just a few years. At Titan, we thrive on learning. Asking questions, sharing knowledge, and pair programming are all ingrained into our culture. I'm surrounded by brilliant programmers who reach out to each other without hesitation daily. Whether you're an apprentice or the CEO, it makes no difference. None of us knows everything, and we never will. I hope my experience encourages you to ask the questions you think are trivial. You won't be the first to ask and certainly won't be the last. No matter where your journey began, we have all struggled to understand how a for loop works at some point. Some of us were just a little older when we did. What's important is that you keep going. I think the most important theme that you can learn from an article like this, from Marcy's writing, from Marcy's experience, and others like her, because to be fair, most of us have probably had a similar experience in some way, shape, or form. It might not be the exact timeline. It might not be the exact age that you started learning to code. But we all have at, at some point have said, I'm not good enough for this, or I don't know enough for this, or I'm not good enough at learning to do this. And those are things I'm really passionate about as an individual. One, uh, the ability to say, I don't know is a incredible superpower, especially for those in tech. When you know that there is so much to know, you can't, you can't possibly know everything. Even the things that you probably know really, really well, really, really, really well, 
there's there, there are things that you still have to look up. There's things that you still have to be reminded on or refreshed on. One of the latest videos I put out on the Laravel official channel was me literally in that video. I, it was not pre-planned or something that I you know scripted out beforehand. I had not touched or written a single test in Laravel and. I probably had written very few tests in other languages before that. That was my first time I had ever touched testing. And within testing within Laravel, it was something that I was kind of nervous about because a lot of people value tests and it is that imposter syndrome kind of creeping up again of I am not that great of a developer at times because I'm not kind of like that traditional feeling. I haven't been building in Laravel, for example, for years upon years, I've wrote my first line of Laravel code coming up on almost two years ago. And that's not that long ago compared to a lot of people who know a lot more than me in some way, shape or form. But I think there's a uh, an element to know one, be able to express and kind of share, hey, I don't know everything and we're going to learn together. And two, there's this ability to when you can finally admit that and also admit that uh, in a public way of saying, I actually don't know, I'm learning that or I'm not fully equipped to answer a single question, but we can learn together. That kind of admittance, especially in a public manner, goes a long way for how you learn and how you retain information. So just like Marcy said in this, there's that aspect of imposter syndrome of I don't know anything or like uh, no one has the same questions as I do or everyone learns it a lot quicker than I do. That That's some people just are naturally gifted with learning something a lot faster and some people pick up on certain things than others. But another thing that I'm really passionate about that I think Marcy touched on is the ability to finding out that you need to relearn in some ways how to learn. And I think they go hand in hand. Uh, one, of the, one of the things I've always kind of enjoyed studying in my off time and uh, within you know books and different psychological studies and everything like that is how does the human learn? In a lot of ways, it's directly linked to how you can admit what you don't know. It's surprisingly linked to how you can, how well you can admit and describe what you don't know. And one of the things, the reason why this podcast is called Learning Driven Development is because I think that is incredibly crucial for anyone, whether you're just starting out your career or whether you have 10 plus years on your belt, if something new, if some new challenge, if some new opportunity, if some new technology, and you have to completely revert how you think, if that came up, how would you learn how to learn what you need to know? And the reason why I chose the name Learning Driven Development for this podcast, for this series, is because I think the best way, especially like we saw in this article with, uh, with Marcy and Imposter Syndrome and everyone else who she, who she queried on, hey, how do you get over Imposter Syndrome? The biggest way to start learning is realizing that you have a problem, a, a gap, a um, skill that you need to overcome, that you need to attain. When you can admit, I don't know this, or I don't know how this works, that is the development driven portion of learning where you're like, I don't know how to make a game. I don't know how to make a chat room uh, with live chats back and forth. And all of a sudden now you have this problem that you're trying to overcome and you're learning the skills necessary to overcome that problem. When you're asking a question and you're admitting in front of a bunch of people or even just publicly on, on Twitter or like in a blog or in a video, hey, I don't know this or I don't know this to the best of my ability. You are saying there is something I need to learn. And in a lot of ways that kickstarts the development process that, that learning process where now I have this problem I can solve. Now I have this outcome I am looking forward to. And learning starts with that, with having a goal in mind, with having a mental attitude, a mental capacity in your mind to say, there's things I don't know. How can I learn better so that I can find the solution in order to solve it. I think the best developers, the best uh, problem solvers, the best communicators, the best teachers 
are going to be the ones who always find the elements that they don't know because you're never going to know everything and so whether you're starting your career whether you're finishing it or whether you're just somewhere in the middle keep learning keep creating keep building